Hello, it's me, Jackalopium. Welcome along. We're back playing some more In Case. This is season two of In Case. This will be episode 39. Uh, last episode, we found a site called, like, it's like, it was like a chicken shop, diner, an old chicken shop in the wasteland. I've just gone up to the next, the, the next unk noun, the next unknown and the next unknown site. And it's, uh, an abandoned hospital. So that's what it looks like. Uh, and then that is under the dome. That's where we are. That's where we were last episode. So we've got a couple more sites to check out. Uh, and then, you know, we can just carry on exploring. We are pretty close to finishing this game, I reckon, because I'm now level 29. I don't know if level 30 is the max. I'm not 100% certain. However, I am running out of skills. Look, all of these with the blacked out plus mark are maxed out skills. So, got four maxed out skills and only three left. So... Piloting I've just upped as well, just to get a bunch of bonuses for servo shells. Uh, and then, I guess, because Psyonix is already at a max as well, I'm not even that fussed about getting any extra combat skills, really. I'm just perfectly happy with my Psyonix shooter. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, explore this abandoned hostel. It's definitely not... Super spoopy. Oh, hey, there's a bonfire, a lit bonfire. So perhaps there is somebody hanging around. I've also got a bit of a malice here, a slowed down malice, which looks like it's going to last for three days. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we won't be getting rid of that anytime soon. Oh, yeah, before we go on, just want to, yeah, break that down. Yeah, and I've also upgraded my side glove off camera to the max level to 10, to level 10. So my weapon is getting there. My, my, my weapon is now maxed. So, you know, half of my skills, more than half my skills are maxed. We're, we're drawing to an end, I think. Although there's apparently there's a third act. This is act two. And apparently there is a third act. I think probably that's more of a... It's probably a bit more on rails, the third act. That's probably like your big, your big old end game fight. Give me all of the stuff. Yeah. Perhaps I do. I should look up what the max level is. I mean, it seems like it could be 30. But I'm not sure. We'll just keep going. Okay. It's a coat. A coat. A cut. A coach. Coach. <laughs> cock. Uh, hermetically sealed helmet. I do have one of these already, but I'm not sure if it's uh, that higher level. And a Galenus. And Hermeticon gloves. Uh, speaking of equipment, I also, in the last map, managed to get hold of a really nice pair of gloves. These are definitely endgame gloves. Look. Plus three initiative, plus 15 psionics, right up my strata. And plus three authority, so... That's pretty much the authority and everything sorted. Let's grab everything. Oh yeah, the broken turlet. It's the mother load! Oops. 
Let's not look in the mirror because we tend to like spook ourselves. <laughs> okay, so the familiar Medcom 72 unit there. Do we have any... Oh, I guess... Can we... The bruiser quizzically sticks out oh, no, not you. I'm trying to click on the medcom. Uh, so, yeah, we don't have any addictions. Remove rads. Do we even have any rads? Two rads. Big flaming wood. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, I mean, I'm so, I'm so tough now. I pretty much melt, melt everything. You know what I'm saying? Can I break that TV set down? Yeah, I can dismantle it. Yeah, look, it's a, uh, it's Meatball. Is he a Necroid? Is he maybe a friendly Necroid? Yeah, maybe, because he doesn't seem to have the, the eye. Yeah, look, it's a friendly, it's a friendly uh, Fallout 3, 4, 2 character. A swollen, bloated creature is sitting beside a large fire in the middle of the ruined operating room. The creature is oozing brown slime. Mm. Staring into the fire, it mumbles softly. Yeah, everybody loves a bit of oozing brown slime. Get his attention. We whistle softly. The mountain of flesh, trembling like jelly, slowly turns towards you. The thing before you is a necroid. Yes, I know that. But an unusual specimen, it sways continuously from side to side, wriggling like a thick len length of rope. The gaunt and twisted head moves as if there's no skull inside. Hmm, flabby clit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a mutant. Uh, he sees you at last. Reply. A mutant puts his soft wit. And then points, he's, oh, he's saying Meatball sees you. Okay, yeah, that kind of like took me by a little bit of surprise, you know, kind of like role playing or not. Um, Meatball slowly spreads his arms, his hands dangle with a strange squelching sound. Necroid is a form, intelligence, ability to speak is a matter of content, hmm. Meatball will put it this way. The average Necroid is, yeah, you get the, the idea with the voice. I won't continue with it. Uh, the average Necroid is, you would say, a walking corpse. Uh, we'll ask him. He snuffles. Memories are a construct of our personalities. This little man inside our head decides what we remember, so to speak. The little man decides never the fact. Uh, yeah, you can read that if you're interested in the technical, so to speak, aspect of the transformation. Georgie became Meatball before he died and began to rot. Nice. Ask him about the bones. He's got a boner, of course. Uh, yep, you can read that. Uh, did he just do a My Precious? Very good. Yeah, they'll never get that reference. And a mutant rests his soft but very heavy hand on your shoulder. Meatball thinks you're here for a reason. Yeah, I don't see the point of giving a, a kind of reference that, like, everyone's going to know. That's just me. It's, like, the kind of most bog-standard kind of reference. I'd prefer to give a reference of something that leads somewhere, you know, a bit more mysterious, you know? Explain that stealing bones is a very peculiar activity. 
offer to scan yourself. If you're hiding someone else's bones inside you, the scanner will show it. Uh, object. If that was true, his bone marrow would have rejected your flesh and organs long ago. State this as a medical doctor. Um, yeah, we can science ourselves. Do it. The mutant agrees. You both wait while the scanner's green beam slides across your body. Meeble stares intently at the screen. Oh, he's so cute. He's super cute. I love him. Can we keep him? Yeah, if this was Wasteland, he'd just be added to our party as like an NPC. Being an advocate of reason, he says, I'm not, so to speak, at liberty to ignore your arguments. You may go, but if you ever want a visit, feel free to stop. Bye. All right. Nice. So there you go. That, oh, no, no. That's his stuff. His stuff. Yeah, I'm not that fast. I'm not going to rob this little darling. And he is a darling. Look at him. Man, he is super cute. Look at him. Oh. Yeah, I always feel really, uh, you know, I always feel like simpatico to these kind of like, you know, spooky or like, uh, you know, disfigured or like disabled characters. Yeah, I mean, uh, the stuff I'm writing, you know, in my story, you know, it's like a, a kind of horror, but it's like kind of whimsical horror. Look, there's a dangling skeleton. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, but I kind of don't understand why everyone hates, like, like, stuff you're supposed to hate in horror comics. If I met a ghost in real life, in reality, I'd just make friends with him. I'd want to make friends with a ghost. I'd want to make friends with a werewolf or the or the Dracula. It must be some kind of Dracula. Um, okay, so there you go. It was a nice peaceful encounter. I enjoyed it. Let's go. Yeah, we need to sleep as well at some point because I'm already on energon fumes. Yeah, so the stuff I'm writing is basically like horror stuff. Like, but kind of uh, like whimsical horror because I love that stuff. I love uh, like House of a Thousand Corpses. I think that's so, um, such an amazing film. The kind of like cartoony, unrealistic stuff I love. Um, uh, that's kind of why I love like, uh, what is it? Nightmare on Elm Street 5. That's like my favorite of the series, I think, because it is so kind of cartoony. Uh, and most people hate it, so, um, so we've, there you go. can we, let's uh, cut some wires. Yeah, so the stuff I'm writing, yeah, as I was trying to say. <laughs> Instead of like um, kind of horror and, you know, being afraid, I want to kind of embrace the kind of spooky stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess it comes from, damn, what was that? What was that cartoon where, oh man, I'm going to have to try and find that cartoon. It was like, um, like, like all these like movie monsters, like universal movie monsters, but portrayed as like, uh, like funky teens. I mean, 
Uh, it's probably a little bit old fashioned now because, uh, like, you know, pretty much everything's moved on. But it was from like the late 70s, early 80s, and that's like my kind of. I love that kind of stuff. Let's, um, let's hope we don't get blowed up. I think we might have spotted everything. Uh, we can get into this place here. Let's just hope we... Like I say, that we don't get blowed up. Is there anything else here? In fact, what is the name of this place? Oh, it's the new committee outpost. Okay, that's what this is. Ah, hey, there's some peeps. Oh, I'd love a good cup of joe right now. Wow. You're stood right next to a coffee okay. machine. Uh, so there you go. You see a new committee patrolman nodding off periodically. Dark blue circles under his eyes. His stare utterly unfocused. As you approach, he yawns loudly, not even bothering to cover his mouth with his hand. Harry Terence, he introduces himself, new committee. Actually, to hell with a protocol. Don't mind if the guys are jumpy. We're all on pins and needles. So there you go. Instant coffee. Express sympathy. Okay, we can offer to fix the machine. Scan it. Okay, there you go. How can we fix it? Oh, okay, it's through dialogue, of course. It is repair the coffee machine. Uh, there you go. Hello again. Fixed it. Observe that the coffee vendor machine was broken on purpose. I hope to see you again soon. Okay. And there is another, another guy. Good day. See ya. Okay. So that's that. So there you go. We've we fixed the coffee machine. Oh, there is a third guy, August Bradley. Let's talk to him. You got anything for us to do? No. Nope. Uh, I think I will uh, open all of this junk off camera. Senpai, I have a question. Oh, gosh. All right. Once you catch up, I don't want to, like, have this conversation in the middle of a minefield, but go ahead. The humming of hard-working coolers in Yoko's head that your companion is pondering on something. She brightens up when she sees you. Senpai, can you help me expand my knowledge base? What specifically interests you, we ask? I'm considering the incident with the coffee machine. Of course. You reported to the blacks that That's like your cousin, right? <laughs> Why would anyone destroy a source of valuable food items? Either there is no logic in it, or I just do not see it. Yeah, but humans aren't logical. We're irrational. We're messed up. Everything is, is a load of nonsense. That's what being a human is. Know cynically that you got to hustle if you want to stay alive. The desert trader needed to sell his goods. Oh, my God. Tell her the trader who broke the machine was being greedy and selfish. The uh, what? <laughs> this information. The light in her eyes is flashing. How do we even know I have been reviewing examples of this concept in European that he did it? Fairy tales. In these stories, such behavior was deemed unacceptable. I'm glad that my earlier assessments are correct and not obsolete. Yoko curtsies in a cute way. Social mode. Thank you, Senpai. All right. Uh, I'm just going to put a quick little save in just because I don't want to go through all of that nonsense all over again if we get blowed up with a, by a mine or something. <laughs>
What else is there to do? Bunch of stuff. Okay. Wow, that's a tiny little... Oh no, there's our... A black wing employee. It's usually the blue wings that are all carked off. Alright, let's go back here. It looks like this might be the best way to go. I'm going to... Uh, unequip the servo shell and go solo. Yeah, how do we get up there? Oh, maybe the jetpack. Do we have one on us? Do we have one in our pocket. Yeah, we do. Great. Okay, we can't get there. Okay, there's that. Yep, some more dog tags, a bunch of stuff. Oh, hey, there's, uh, there's somebody else there. Okay. Oh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't even need the jetpack. I could have just run up there. Okay, that was a mistake. I'm going to take some damage here. Okay, so Theodore Ted Red. He's given up a shiv, big whoop, another cloaking device. I say another because I've already got one, but I guess if I didn't have one, that would be uh, super cool. Let's uh, run off this nonsense. Great. That did like literally nothing to us really. And yeah, there is uh, the fatigue back again. Is there somewhere to sleep in here? That's what I would like, is somewhere to sleep. Oh no! Okay, we're up on top by, you know, mostly on accident, but... Okay, there you go. It's a ladder. Okay, yeah, there is a bed. Great. Quite enjoy that howling. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel afraid of, like, stuff like we're told to be afraid of, like... Wolves or, you know, I don't know, bats or, you know, spooky things. I just want to be friends with everybody. <laughs> okay, so that is the Doomsday Whistle. So, I don't know how much more there is to do here, but I am going to have to search through every piece of uh, interactable like terrain like all of these lockers and supply barrels it's probably going to take half an hour to an hour 
off camera. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode, and it's going to do it for uh, this week as well. And we will do something. I'll have a read through the quest log, and we'll do some either some more exploring of different sites, or or we'll get back to doing story stuff. Uh, but yeah, enjoy your weekend, have a great weekend, and thanks for watching. Please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more in case, or if you want to see more RPG or strategy gaming in general. Alright, thanks a lot. Bye for now. Oh, hey, you okay? Oh, damn enchiladas! <laughs>